Hi everyone, welcome to the Robert Show. We are here at Data Streaming Summit and super excited to be with Adam Richardson from OpenAI. Uh, Adam, welcome to the Robert Show. It's your debut. Super excited to chat today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Awesome. Uh, Adam, just a quick question uh, and just for our audience, would love to know a little bit about what you do at OpenAI and uh, tell us about the real problem that you all are solving. So at OpenAI, I'm the tech lead for the real-time infrastructure team, nice. which builds all kinds of streaming infrastructure for our applied stack. And we basically, we run, we run systems like Apache Kafka, Apache Flink, a few other related platforms, basically encompassing all of our applied services at OpenAI. So our, our stuff is on the back end of many of OpenAI's products. Nice, uh, very helpful. Uh, uh, I'm also curious, uh, since you all have been, you know, obviously, uh, who doesn't know OpenAI, everyone knows it. Uh, I'm kind of curious to know uh, what made your organization adopt data streaming, uh, but at the same time, uh, also curious to know about the current stack, how does that look like? Yeah, absolutely. I, I would say that streaming has been in OpenAI's blood for quite some time, like even going back well before my team existed, we were running Kafka our, ourselves. Um, yep. and. Yeah, o overall we see it as sort of a commodity platform that almost every service will have some use case for it at some point. Exactly. Probably the single biggest use case for us now is actually data warehouse ingestion, which is actually the subject of my talk earlier today. <laughs> nice. Um, and like re really pretty much everybody, at some point if you're developing a service at OpenAI, you're going to want your data in the data warehouse. And that's like the ubiquitous capability. Right. More recently, we do have more like stateful streaming use cases with Apache Flink, and mm -hmm. we've also built out um, K Forder, which is an internal fork of Viewforder, sort of a platform for managed Kafka consumers, a way of people for, uh, to allow people to write more complex consumer workloads with the minimal amount of effort. That's awesome, and uh, thanks for sharing that. Very helpful, uh, Adam. Also, quick question for you: Since we are a data streaming uh, summit, uh, and this year's um, theme looks like more open and the uh, you know multi-technology as well. What are your thoughts uh, when you see uh, this happening in the space? Uh, are you excited about the openness? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's really cool how um, within the constraints of the Apache Kafka protocol, there are lots of different implementations making different trade-offs backed by different corporate entities. I, I, I mean, I can't comment too much on like OpenAI's <laughs> relationship specifically, yep. but it's very healthy, I believe, to have so many different implementations making different trade-offs and having people pick and choose. And you know, nice. uh, I, I really see the, the value in open standards and common standards across all of these underlying platforms. Love it. Uh, also, what do you think about the space? Uh, because the data streaming space itself is kind of uh, you know, picked up very well in the last maybe three to four years that I'm kind of seeing. What do you think about this space and how do you see it moving in the next maybe eight to 10 months? Yeah, I think that, I mean, the, the things that are on everybody's mind, I think, are diskless and tiered storage and also transparent um, data ingestion, like yes. using Iceberg as like a backing store. Those are all very interesting ideas. I think it sort of remains to be seen, like, which specific implementations will be the winners in those spaces and, like, how well some of those systems work in practice. Right. But I do think there's, like, I'm very excited to watch. Um, there's tons of both open source and closed source development, and we're all following it very closely. Overall, overall, I personally am very excited about diskless. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see how things shake out. Is there a more entrance in that space? Kind of also curious to learn a little bit about uh, how do you feel about data streaming summit? Uh, because I think uh, we are seeing here the best of, uh, you know, the community, the developers, the enterprise leaders um, who are attending this one. What do you feel about data streaming summit? Well. The conference has really been great. I've enjoyed it a lot, and I, I, you know, I'm really grateful to the Data Streaming Summit for having us. I think this is, it's really great to bring so many people together in, in San Francisco and, and for us to get so much face time and to facilitate you know, these natural connections and to really learn from each other. I really think that like something, not, not just for data streaming, but for tech as an industry, I think we all benefit a lot from this um, this environment of being willing to share ideas and to learn from each other, that, that's something that I think is great and unique about the tech industry and yep. that I'm seeing embodied in full here at the Data Streaming Summit. Love it. Uh, if you have to rate it between zero to 10, what would it look like? <laughs> it's a 10, of course. Oh, wow, mm -hmm. I love it. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, one last question for you, Adam, is around the advice for you know those uh, DevOps engineers, the data engineers who are getting into the streaming space because obviously you've worked in the space for years, you yep. know how it all works. Uh, what advice would you have for them? I think the single most important value as an engineer, not just in data streaming, but in general, is curiosity. 
Um, so I don't, true. Yeah, I don't think there's any, it's not just about experience. I think that like experience is valuable, but like if you have the curiosity and the, the will to go and research and learn and dig into the technologies, reading the papers, reading the blog posts, um, I think it's, it's very possible to um, learn a tremendous amount and really become an expert, even if you haven't worked in the space for, for, for 10 years, 20 years, whatever. And so I highly encourage anybody considering entering the space to keep that in mind and remember that, that curiosity is really what, what propels your career forward. And I also think that the space evolves very quickly, so you need to be curious <laughs> about newer things. You yeah. need to upscale yourself and see what's happening. And then also <laughs> conferences like this, when you meet people, you get to learn so much. So pure, pure, uh, you know, uh, helps a lot. Uh, one last question, I promise. Sure. Uh, if folks want to reach out to you, which is the best place? X, LinkedIn, where can they reach out to you? Feel free to add me on LinkedIn. I'm not on X, unfortunately, but yeah, always happy to chat with with, with uh, fellow data streaming engineers. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, this is great. Adam, such a pleasure chatting with you on The Robert Show. We'll keep the conversation going, but uh, great insights, and uh, thanks for the amazing talk. Yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. <laughs>